One of my favorite things to do in family history is to add sources to my ancestors because it's the very thing that we work off of to gather what we believe to be the correct birth and death and burial information. And as you scroll down here, you can see we have even a spouse. This person doesn't have children, but a lot of times on these documents that we find, it will list children. Here we have parents and siblings. But all of this information has come from sources that have been gathered on this person. If you scroll down here, we've got quite a few different sources here, census records, marriage, coming down here to death. But all of those together, as we've read through that information and studied them, have allowed us to put in these family members, but also all this vital information that sits here. So it's great when we have record hints um, that the computer generated for us that they believe are sources that belong to our ancestors. And if they are, of course, we have attached them. And if there are no hints, you can actually search um, into the records of Family Search or Ancestry and these other websites. But what if you have your own personal original document in your hands that you'd like to get into this site? And so that's what I want to focus on today is attaching a death certificate that is an original to Mary and take you through the steps on how to do that. So if I click on sources, this is just a quick way to scroll down. You can see that all of these sources came from Family Search itself because they all have trees. If it has a world, it came from any other site but Family Search. But up here, under the word sources, you're going to see open details, which that just means it's going to open up all the details to each one of these sources. But then it has to add a source or attach a source from the source box. So today we're going to add our own original source. And now it's up to me to fill in all of this information here. So the first thing I'm going to do is put in a title for this source. And so uh, she was uh, she passed away as a kale. So I put in the name that was written on her death certificate, where the death certificate came from, and the year that it applied to her. So she died in 1945. Then I'm going to come down here, and my particular source does not come from a website. So I'm not going to use this URL option. Mine comes from a memory. So I'm going to click Add a Memory, and I want to upload it because I don't have it in my gallery yet. And I'm going to upload it now. So I click on Upload. Now, previously, I have scanned this into my Dropbox. So over here in, this is my own computer now that we're looking at. And as you come in here, you can see Dropbox is sitting here. And as I scan documents in, that's where I choose to put all of my uh, family history information. So I've just put them into folders and I've organized my family history stuff into actual folders. So I'll just go click on my family history folder. I've labeled all of my folders by last names of my ancestors. So I'm going to scroll down here to the Kale folder. I'll double click on that. And then I'm just going to come over here and scroll down till I find Mary uh, Mary Kale's death certificate, which it sits right here. So once I find it, I will click open. Now just know I'm not going through the process of literally at this point how to scan in a document because I don't have that ability right here. You can actually walk into a family history center and scan in a document and save it onto a flash drive and do it the exact same way I'm doing it now. Instead of going to Dropbox, you would actually just go click on your flash drive and you would pull it in from there. Or you can save, you can scan documents in and save them onto your desktop wherever you can find them to be able to upload them. And so you can either Google how to scan in documents or go into a family history center to get that help. But once I've clicked on the document, you can see it's listed here in the file name. I'm going to click on open and that will then open it up into this memory area. Now that it's uploaded, I'm going to go on to the next area where it's asking me where this document can be found. Now there is a website, it's called vitalrec.com. And as I come into this area, this is a list of all the different states and where these documents come from. So if I go down to this area and click on, I know this death came from North Carolina, you can see that this is the address that they have where somebody can go find this document. So not only did I come here, but I also just Googled the North Carolina Vital Records and this is the page that came up. And I actually like this information a little bit better 
This is the mailing address that was on vitalrec.com, but I like having all this contact us information. So I'm just going to highlight it and copy it and go back to the original family tree detail page and I'm going to paste that information in there. That way if anybody ever wants to go out and find this document themselves in North Carolina, they can do it. Down here in the describe the notes, I literally can go to this document and I can index it myself. I can state the name, when they were born and died and all that information. But because I have this original sitting up here, I'm not going to take the time to do that under describe notes. Now we need to finish this off by putting in a reason of why we're attaching this particular source. And it's providing evidence of birth and death dates and places, the burial place, parents, spouse, and cause of death. And then I'll come down to this area where they're going to say, hey, tag this source to that vital information. So, of course, it's giving evidence of the person's name, their birth. It doesn't mention a christening. It does mention their death and their burial, and it also mentions that she's a female. So that's what it's going to tag. And then it's also going to add this to my source box, which I love because anytime I'm attaching original documents, if anybody were to come in here and delete it, I could easily reattach it because it's sitting in my source box. So I do want that checked. And then I will click Save. Now, as that's saving, you can see here that it has a little... Of like a photo album sitting here instead of a tree because that's how it looks when it's a document that I personally have added. When I click on it, you can now see it. It takes a while for Family Search to screen what I add in there, but once it's screened, anybody can click on it. Well, you might even be able to click on it right now and go look at it, but that screening sign will leave in a little while. But you can see the citation of where somebody can go find this document. You can see that I'm the one that contributed this, and you can see the reasoning of why I attach this particular source to this ancestor. So the next thing I do is I'm just going to left click, because I like all my sources in chronological order, so I'm going to left click and hang on to that left click, and when you get that long gray bar, I'm going to let it go, and it puts it in the order that I want it to go in. Now when I said tagging, I'm going to come back up here and show you what that means. So remember how I tagged her name? When you click on that, you can see that particular source I created is showing that source gives evidence of her name. So that's what tagging is. And you can see I actually tagged the birth too. And there's that source once again that sits right here providing evidence of her birth. So that's what tagging a source does is, is all these different sources you want to tag to vital information to show what it's giving evidence of. I want to scroll down here to the source area and just explain myself really clear on this. If I were to click on any one of these sources, let me just start with this top one. You can come over here where it says tag and if you click on tag, you can see that it's tagged to the person's name, their sex and their birth. So this is all the vital information that sits up above. So what that's saying is this source is giving evidence of every one of these things. Okay, I'm going to cancel out of that. Let me go down to this other one. So on the marriages, unfortunately on marriages we can only tag certain things. They don't have um, the actual marriage tag yet. I'm sure they'll get it in the future, but not yet. But just be aware of this whole area right here that you can come in here and make sure that sources are tagged to vital information. Here's that source that I created. When I click on that death certificate, I tagged five different vital information areas. I did the name, sex, birth, death, and burial. So let's just say that one of these wasn't tagged. Let me show you how this works. Let's just go to this find a grave index. And if I click on tag, I have the ability to remove these or to even add them. So once I get it the way I want it, what that source is giving evidence of, I'll mark it and then I'll come tag it. I'm going to scroll back up here to the top so that you can see whenever you click on any of this vital information here, whether it's her name, here we go, you can see that 10 sources were tagged to her name. So 10 of those sources below are giving evidence that that is her name. If I scroll down to the birth, 10 different sources are showing that that's the birth as close as we can determine with those sources. 
How about burial? Let's go check this out. There's three sources that give evidence that that is the burial. So I'm hoping that that helps you to understand what tagging sources is really all about. I hope that this was pretty clear on how we now can go in and add our own personal original documents that we have on our ancestors to their personal detail page.